Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. I'm going to give you something else to be looking for, another idea in, in searching and finding things to sell. It's specifically animal-related items. There's a collectibles category that covers animals, it covers dogs, it covers cats. We specifically look for items to list in those categories. As a dog owner ourselves, there's people that just collect Chihuahua items or Doberman Pinschers or Pugs. Pugs is one of the most popular categories in the dog category that I personally see. They're well collected. Some people think they're so ugly they're cute. I do like pugs as well myself. We're just going to talk about pugs today, but this relates to any of the categories. But if you find the right item, you find the right specifics for it, you can make a lot of money in looking for these items. There's many collectors of dog items, but for the most part, it's people that have those specific dogs. So knowing the key hot dogs is a big plus. Same thing goes for cats, cows, frogs, pigs, whatever. People collect all of those. People have pigs as pets. People have cows that they've had in their family for years. So keep that in mind when you're looking for stuff. Don't pass up things because they're animal related. Even if they're cheaper items, if they're cute enough, unique enough, they will still sell. We're going to go to the screen and show you that right this minute. Uh, today we're going to talk about animals in general. I picked pugs, but you can literally go through most dog species or varieties or cats, birds, farm animals, whatever the case, but pugs I know I always sell. Every time I get a pug item of any kind, it sells. I don't care if it's a coffee mug, a pillow, um, a scarf, a shirt, whatever it is, if it has a pug, it sells for us. Now, of course, there's different varieties of items, obviously. There's old, there's new. It doesn't really matter. When somebody's buying specifically for a specific kind of dog or animal, they don't care if it's new, they don't care if it's old, they just want it to be a pug. So new, old, coffee cups, whatever you can find with a pug on it's going to sell. Again, pug is... It used to be hard to get pug items, but nowadays they're making a lot of it, so I'm able to just turn over a ton of it. Sometimes I'll buy it by the case at a wholesale deal or at um, retail arbitrage, depending on what we're doing and where we're at and what kind of material it is. But this is a terracotta, which is kind of like a pottery. $600 for this one here. Um, gold shider, so anyway. Next one here is an advertising piece. Uh, what a pop. It's like a popsicle for uh, a scent, like a lollipop, basically. Sucker. $375. Now, a lot of this era, they had these. These are chalkware, and I've talked about chalkware specifically. It's made out of plaster. It's usually airbrushed. Perfect example of early advertisement. $375. 46 bids. This has so much cross-category appeal. It has dogs, for one. Pugs. It's got uh, the candy uh, tie-in for Wada Pops. It's got advertisement. It's got chalkware. It's got figural for the dog itself. So it can go in like five or six different categories. That's why something like this is key. The more categories any item could go into, the more chances it's going to sell because there's more people looking for it. If let's say we just listed this in one category and only had an interest in one category, your chance of selling it are going to be lower because it's only one category. But you multiply that times three, four, five, six categories and your rate of sell on that is going to be huge. It's going to sell. 46 bids on this one here. Uh, this is a stamp holder. It probably comes out of his mouth or you just open it up. I've seen many of these stamp holders. They're figural. Yeah, there you go. It opens up. And then a roll of stamps just sits in the middle there. It's set on a desk. This is another good example. It's bronze. And it's, you know, stained bronze, painted bronze, dyed bronze, whatever they would do to it. 300 bucks basically on this one. Again, pug-wise, I sell. Victorian trade cards, postcards, books, animal things, puppets, toys, anything with a pug on it, we, we sell. Wood carvings, whatever it is. And, and anything in, in pug-wise can show up. Anything. Even flags, banners, uh, statuary for your lawn, anything. And any of that will sell. This one's $500 for this one. It's a tobacco jar. He's actually... Somebody stuck that in there. It looks like a real vintage one. It may not be. It may be the original to the piece. I'm not really sure on this specific one. But it looks like someone stuck in a vintage clay pipe from like the uh, 1800s, for, to me anyway. 509 on that one. Now, even new stuff. Pugs are just so, so popular. That's why I say they're so ugly, they're cute and adorable at the way they are. So this is another example of pugs. Danbury, I don't know. Yeah, this is one of the Danbury Mints. Danbury Mint made a ton of just pug stuff, just a whole line of pug stuff. It all goes for top dollar. So Christmas-wise, there's ornaments and everything. I'm going to show you a bunch of that mixed in here, too. But I don't care what it is. You just look for the pug. I don't. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's old. It doesn't matter if it's new. You can find this kind of stuff everywhere. 
You get lucky and you're at a sale, you might run into a whole bunch of all pug stuff or all uh, parrots or something because the owner of it collected it because that's the type of dog they, they liked. Most of this stuff I list in collectibles animals and then I go down by the breed. This one would have went in Christmas probably first and if it didn't sell there then I would have switched it to pug. Depending on the category you list it in, many times if it's a pug you can list it more than other pug items have sold and still be able to sell it if it's something that doesn't show up very often. Like these. $300 for these tiny little ones. It's a bunch of pugs. They're really cute and adorable actually so it's, it's a pretty decent thing. Another Danbury Mint as I said they made a ton of them. Here's a mice and porcelain dog. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, there's the mark right there on the bottom. The cross swords, that's a mice and mark all day long. 242. I'm not big into, into pottery and glass and things like that, but I do mess with the animals. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I show them in my videos. Any of the early animal ceramics, I spend my time learning and you know knowing what to buy. So Mycin's a very good name. 242, as I said. Sterling silver ring with the enamel. There's maybe you know five dollars worth of silver maybe fifteen if you want to throw it out there at an ounce maybe there aren't many rings that weigh over an ounce so just keep that in mind three hundred and twenty five bucks for this one here here's a paper mache i'm not really sure what you'd even want to call it oh it's like a notebook pad okay um, yeah, and it's fallen apart too. So this is something you could have found back then, like a pad. It might have even been an advertising piece for something, but the ad would have, um, you know, advertised like a business that was local. And if you pulled the the piece of paper out of the pad, it would have their name on it. Usually they did them for like um, shopping lists mostly. You'll see some trade cards that actually are shopping lists on the back. CDVs, photos, any early photos, and this is an advertising we once. Hickox 5, I think this is like a quack medicine, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they just have the one photo, so anyway, medicine stuff sells. I don't care what it is. Again, pugs, dogs, whatever it is. Parrots I always sell. I always sell parrot stuff. I always sell insects are very hot. Uh, bugs, insects, anything like that sells incredibly well. Whether it's a piece of paper, as I said, a letterhead, something with a bug or, or a dog in it, it sells too. Even like a label of something that just happens to have a pug in it, that sells too. This one went for 170 basically. Another pug. This is an early photograph, actual photograph too with information on it. 135. Now some of these photos I look at very closely because sometimes they're actually uh, mascots for like military ships and things like that. Another just a CDV, it looks like your cabinet card. And it's a cute little pug in there too. Uh, 127 on that one. Toys. Here's some painted lead musical dogs. Um, the pugs like this, um, you can find anything in pugs, as I keep saying. But this is a standardized line. They made all kinds of figures doing the exact same thing. So basically, they use the same instruments and just change the figure up. There's bears, there's cats, there's various other dogs, basically identical to this. Same basic base, just the animal is different. 88 bucks. I know the last one, you know, doesn't seem like a bunch. It went for just over 80 but, you know, you're only paying a dollar or two for something like that. Like this tin type here. Something like this, I may pay, pay a couple bucks or maybe a fiver at the top, so maybe five bucks. You're going to get 80 bucks back out of it. You know, even on a bad day, you'd still probably take 60 just because it's a cute little pug on a table. It's a little dark of an image, but still. Here's a, a Prang. Yeah, it's a Prang card. Now, Prang was a leading manufacturer, right along with Raphael Tuck. It's a British company. Any of these early Victorian uh, cards like this do sell as well, too. And there's the pug. It's a rather cute image here, too. It's the era that I look for on these. And there's a ton of these kind of cards. They show up with postcards. They show up with, like, literally vintage greeting cards. 8262 on that one. Ten bids. Just another statue, and you can see the crazing with the little tiny cracks. That's typical. It's a typical Majolica piece, 75 bucks. Anthropomorphic as well. It's a dog dressed like a person. Here's another one. This is Pugnacious Pug. Um, trying to take it off the pig wise, and he's wearing the pee in a pod kind of costume here. There's a bunch of these Pugnacious Pug dogs here. Um, it's a whole line of these, so these always sell. They go very, very well too. Not much to them, it's just a cast piece. Here's another interesting one. Um, let me see. It's a vintage desk item. It's like an, yeah, this is an inkwell. Probably his head moves up. Yeah, this is actually on a Victorian trade card that advertises shoes. So this could actually be a shoe advertisement, believe it or not. So anyway, it's an inkwell. He only sold it for $57.99. I would have probably put the trade card with it 
and then sold it that way. Here's another one. Um, he sold two of these. It's just a black ceramic gloss storage jar, just a jar. Looks like it's modern. Looks like it has the box, too. Yep, and a box. It still went for 32 bucks basically, plus they paid shipping. Cracker Jack's Charm. I've showed these in many videos. This is one of the really small ones. There's different sizes, these two. This one went for 30 bucks. This is something you get for a quarter, a nickel, a dollar at the most. Christmas ornaments, as I said, the glass ones, they make them for everything. I save on something like this would probably sell all year round. You might do a little better around Christmas, but I wouldn't wait. I'd just put it up and be done with it. These are fragile. I'd risk damaging it if I kept it around. So, Coffee mugs, as I said, anything with the puck on it. And I, I mean anything almost within reason will sell for us. And the last item is just a tapestry pillow. Doesn't matter what the kind, a bed throw, a sofa throw, um, sheets, clothing with a pug on it, all of that stuff sells. So hopefully that gave you some ideas. Again, most of this stuff, regardless of what it is, this could be listed in tapestry and pillow section, fabric, um, collectibles, animals. So there's at least three or four categories this one can go into. So again, it doesn't matter the breed or the type of dog. You just got to do your research on that one. I know Pug sells, and there's some other ones that I know that sell, and I'm not going to give you every single one of them. This is one of the biggest ones here in the dogs. So if you know this one, you can expand out, see dog items, and, and pick them up, and you know, make sure you cop them before you pick them up, though. People love their dogs. I, you know, We collected the little Taco Bell Chihuahua dogs when we first got our Chihuahua. So you know, it's something that many people do, but that's what I have for you. Well, there you go. There's some more items that I look for. I always look for animal-related items. We love animals. I've had dogs or animals or pets my entire life. If you know a little bit about it, you know what to sell, you can make some good money, as I said. But that's what I have for you today. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.